Hello, welcome to Roblox Lua scripting tutorial number 18. In this tutorial, I'm going to be carrying on from the previous tutorial, but I'm going to be teaching you another loop. So, in the previous tutorial, I taught you two types of loops, uh, while loops and repeat loops. So, you know that both of them take a condition, so you put while and then it has a condition in the middle, uh, condition, and then you got the do, and then end. If this condition is true, so say it was true, it would run, okay? The loop would run and it would go good, good, good. So, but if the condition was false, then it would not run. It would skip the loop. Okay, so say I put while 5 is bigger than 9. Well, 5 has never been bigger than 9, so this loop would not run. If I said five, while 5 is less than 9, the condition is true and it would run. But the thing with the while loop is what it does is it checks the condition first and then it runs the loop. But with the repeat, uh, repeat, repeat until five is bigger than nine. Uh, hold on, let me just do until five is less than nine. Okay, so what it does is it runs the loop at least once and then it checks the condition uh, until five is less than nine. So it's going to run this loop until 5 is less than 9. Well, 5 is less than 9, so it's just going to quit out the loop now because 5 is less than 9. Okay, we've done what it wants to do, and let's just go past the loop now. We've, we're going to carry on with the code. Okay, so in this in, in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you about the for loop this time. So the for loop, it's a third type of loop. So there is a fourth type of loop, actually, which I don't know if you've seen it. It's like something like, it goes like this, for I, V in pairs, or something like I pairs. Um, you've, this is the type of loop as well, but I'm going to be talking to you about that probably in the advanced tutorials. Um, I'm not going to cover that in the basic tutorials. In the basic tutorial, I just want to cover the, just the basic for loop, which is very useful. Like you use it all the time in games. So, so that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Okay, so let's begin. So, like usual, just... Um, I'm going to make the loop and then I'm going to explain uh, what it does afterwards and what each part of the loop means. So I'm going to make it first. So let's go. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Don't get confused just because I've put all this stuff in here, like i equals 1, comma 10. Uh, don't get confused because of that. It's nothing that confusing. So um, there are many things, there are a couple of things that we should know about it already. Uh, we should know that it's a loop first of all, because it's got the word do, and you know, when, whenever there's a word do, there's a loop somewhere. So, and we also know that it's a for loop, because we've wrote the word for here, okay? And um, you may have gathered that, because, I mean, these numbers must do something, obviously, so 1 to 10. You might have gathered that maybe this loop, there's no condition, but maybe it loops around 10 times, because there's the number 10 here, and since there's no condition, we're not comparing anything, um, it must loop around 10 times. And that is right, it does loop around 10 times. And uh, you may also have gathered that this letter i here is actually a variable because we have assigned it the value of 1 here. And then we have a comma and then the value 10. So what does this all mean? What does this i equals 1 to 10 mean? Okay, so... Think of this comma as the letter 2, I mean as the word 2, okay, but in Lua we don't write the word 2, we just put a comma, but think of it as the word 2. Um, we'd be saying, for i equals 1 to 10, so it's going to count from 1 to 10, and that's all it's going to do. So every loop, i is going to change its value by 1, it's going to become 1 higher than what it was. So if we were to print i every time, what it would do is, it would start from 1, it would say, okay, i equals 1, i equals 2, the next loop, i equals 3, the next loop, uh, we're going to loop another time, i equals 4, and that's what it's going to do until it reaches 10. So, let's exit and let's play. You can see that we've printed from 1 to 10, okay? And that's what it's done. That's that's what for, that's how for loops work. You print, I mean, the, the, variable, the variable that you put here, it doesn't have to be equal to i, I mean, it doesn't have to be i, it could be anything. You could say for pod equals 1 to 10, and then print pod. Pod would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, like every loop. So you see how every loop, it changes its value by 1. It increments by 1, okay? So that's what it does. But i is the most common letter that we used in for loops, so let's stick with i for the meantime. Okay? So you see how 
this works now. You know how for loops work now. Just this is the syntax that you just need to remember it. You just need to know how how to write it. Just do for and then the variable here that we're going to be um, using inside the for loop. Now remember, you can only use this variable i here within the for loop, like only inside the for loop. You can't go ahead and print i after the for loop ends. Like once we get to 10, it's going to end and it's going to carry on here. We can't just print i like that. No, we can't do that. Um, because i is only allowed to be used inside this for loop. Uh, same thing whatever variable you're using. If you use pod, you can only use this variable here inside this for loop, okay? So inside the do and end. You can't go and print i outside the for loop. No, you can't do that. So, so that's how it works. You make the variable here, you say equals, and then 1 to 10. And if you want to start from 5, you just go i equals 5 to 10. So it's going to start from 5, it's going to count to 10. So, it's, so on the first loop, i is going to be equal to 5. Second loop, i is going to be 6, and then up to 10. So in this loop, it's going to count 5 times. So if you click play, it counts from... Well, yeah, as you can see from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it just counts to whatever the value is on the end and it starts from the first value. Okay, so just remember that. First value is where it starts from and then the second value after the comma is where it ends. So you can think of it as the comma as being the word 2. For i equals 5 to 10, for i equals 5 to 15, maybe that would count from 5 to 15 and you know the same thing so another thing also is if I were to do this for i equals 10 to 1 well let's go ahead and press play and see what this does it's not going to do anything it doesn't it doesn't count from 10 to 1 it it, it doesn't say 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 because the increment value in the for loop is set to a default value of 1 so when you are counting it's going to constantly add 1 to the value when in this case we want to take away 1 because we're counting from 10 to 1 and you're never going to get to the number 1 by adding 1 to 10 you've got to take away 1 so to do this you just need to add a third value just give the for loop a third value and uh, just set it to minus 1 now the third value is equal to the increment value so the first value is where you start from, second value is where you end, and the third value is the increment value, which is um, how we're going to count. So what value are we going to count up in? Are we going to count up in twos? So that would be counting up in twos. Say I had from, from 1 to 100, we'd be counting up in twos. We'd go 1, 3, 5, 7, and we'd just keep counting up in twos. So say I set that to 2, it'd just count up in twos. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 7. Uh, if I set this to 10, Say we started from the value 0, it counts up in 10s, it'd go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, I mean no, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60. So it counts up in 10s. But when you want to go from 10 to 1, say you have a bigger value first and then a smaller value second, you want to say minus 1. Oops. Uh, okay, so you want to do minus 1. So from 10 to 1, you need to say minus 1, okay? And then now if you press play it would count from 10 and it would go to 1 now let me just quickly test something, this is something I haven't tried yet uh, 5 goes 1 to 10 count up in 2's, I'm not sure if it's going to skip the value 10 because it goes 1, 3, 5, 7, it's going to get to 9 then it might go to 11, I'm not sure so stop it from crashing, I'm just going to put a weight in there and see what it does uh, press play yeah it just goes to 9, it doesn't carry on so yeah, when you're counting up in twos, if you start from like an odd number, then it's just going to stop at 9, it's not going to go to 10. Okay, so it's just going to go 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And it's not going to go to 10, it's not going to go to 11, and it's going to stop before, it's going to stop, yeah, before this value here. So it's not going to stop after, it's going to stop before this value. That's what it does. So that is how for loops work. Remember, if you want to, the default value is 1, so there's no point just doing for i equals 1 to 10 and then putting an increment value of 1. There's no point in doing that because the default value, the default setting for a for loop is already set to 1. So there's no point like sticking another value here. You only need to stick another value here if you want to make it 2 or 3 or 4 or even 0 0.1 because you can count up in uh, point 0.1s as well. So say I wanted to do this for i equals 0 to 1, count up in 0 0.1s, it's going to print, uh, it's good to have a wait function in here as well just in case something happens and 
it gets stuck into it, it gets stuck in an infinite loop, and you don't want it to crash your studio, so just stick a weight in there. So for i equals zero to one, count up in zero point ones, uh, it's going to do the same thing. It's just going to count up in zero point ones, as you can see, zero point one, zero point two, zero point three, zero point four, and you can even count up in zero point zero ones. Okay, and then that'll take longer, but you can, it's still the same thing. Uh, another thing I want to tell you with the weight function, as you can see, I've put nothing inside here. There's, I've put, I've given the weight function no parameter. It's like putting a number zero in there. Uh, like usually you're used to putting maybe number one in there, number two in there to make it wait two seconds. So remember this number in here is the number of seconds you wait. So what if I put like nothing in there? Then the default value, if you put nothing in there, or well, the smallest value you can actually possibly wait for is a thirtieth of a second. So I think it is a thirtieth of a second. It might be one over twenty or it might be one over thirty. I think it's one over thirty. You might need to search it up though, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's one over thirty. That's the minimum uh, amount of time you can possibly wait for okay so that's the minimum wait time 1 over 30 it, it'd be equal to 1 over 30 even if you put the value of 0 in there or even if you leave it blank it still set the value to 1 over 30 so to make to wait for the minimum amount of time possible just just put wait and then empty parentheses okay just like that okay so a cool thing I want to show you the for loop just a quick example before I end the tutorial um, is setting brick transparencies. So let me go ahead and insert a brick. You've probably tried to make bricks transparent, but what if you wanted to add a cool like transparent effect on the brick? So this is how to like do this cool transparent effect. Um, right, script let's set a object variable part equals game dot workspace dot part. I could put a script inside the part and use script dot parent, but I can't be bothered to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and say part dot transparency equals i. Now you know that the value of i changes every single loop and it's going to change by 0 0.01. So what it's going to do is you know that the transparency property, uh, the minimum transparency is zero, so that's completely not transparent. So you can see the brick, and then one is completely transparent, as in you can't see the brick, it's invisible. Okay? Anything above one you just no point doing that because the maximum is 1 anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for i equals 0 to 1, count up in 0 0.01, so it's going to change the transparency by a little bit every single loop. So it's just going to change the transparency just by a little bit every single loop, and we're going to set that value of i to the transparency of this part. So if we go ahead and click play, it just gives a cool transparent effect. Whoopsie, I forgot to anchor it. Okay, press play. And what have we done? We've forgotten the wait function. Because this for loop is just, I think the, I think it loops around 60 times a second. I think it's 60 times a second or 30 times a second. But anyway, what we need to do is we need to put a wait function to make it wait, so we don't we don't loop it too fast. We want to actually see the effect of the transparency. So to see the effect, you want to put a wait function uh, next to it so that it doesn't go transparent too fast. We want to do a nice slow effect. By slow, I mean slow like that. So you can see that it's just gone transparent slowly. Okay. So let me just make it red. Press play again. You can see it's going slowly transparent. Look at that. Wonderful. Now I could change it by 0 0.01, um, and then I can make it wait 0 point, 0.1 of a second. So by putting no zero here, same thing as putting 0.1. Um, if you can hear that shouting downstairs, I don't know where that's coming from. Anyway, um, so wait 0 0.1. Let's go ahead and press play. See what happens. It gives a more like how do I say it? The effect is slightly different. Okay, uh, when I make it do 0 0.1, it's more like a, it gives a rapid change instead of a nice smooth change. It's more like a rapid change. Um, so that's how to change transparency using a for loop. For loops are very useful for that sort of thing because uh, you get a variable in there. You can just change that. You can use that variable to change different things in a for loop. It is very useful. So that is how to do that. Um, you can go ahead and play around with it if you want. Go change reflectance. Change. Actually, a cool thing you can do as well is if I make it wait zero and for i equals zero to one hundred, uh, add one. Okay. What I can also do is I can change the 
position of the brick. Um, part dot position equals vec to three dot new um, zero i zero. So the y axis of this part will now be equal to the i value in the for loop. So if you watch this, it should go up by 100 studs. Uh, let me just make sure that, I'll take the base plate away, let me set it to 0, 0, 0, and let's press play. You can see the part is moving up. So that's another cool thing to do with for loops. Just play around with uh, positions and sizes and see what you can do. Okay, so there's going to be a sec there's going to be a third tutorial on loops and this goes to all sorts of loops. Um, yeah, this applies to all sorts of loops, the third tutorial. It's not a new type of loop, it's just something that you can do with loops. Um, something very useful. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial with them. Bye.